we're finally well and truly in the topic of calculus, right? And one of the crucial initial questions is how do you use what you've just learned to be able to find these particular objects because they're very important to us uh, as you'll continue to see. Tangents you've heard of. We talked about tangents yesterday. Tangents are those lines, straight lines, that do what to a curve? They just touch, right? Uh, they don't cut across, they just touch and then they continue going, okay? A better definition for a tangent, a more concrete definition now that we've got all the language for it is, it's a line that shares the same gradient as a curve where they intersect. Let me say that again. In fact, I'll write it down. A tangent is a line, it's a straight line, that shares the same gradient as the curve that it's just touching, okay, at that point. At the point that it touches. So that's what a tangent is. We'll come to this other idea in a second. Let's just get the tangent on the board, shall we? I've gone ahead and I've done a bit of drawing because I've looked at this function and I've thought, I can factorize this. When you do factorize it, what do you get? x minus 1, x minus 2. Which is why you can see I have strategically placed my parabola down here with its intercepts at 1 and 2. What would the tangent look like at or when x equals 1? Well, you can see where x equals 1 is down there, right? So I'm looking for a line that just touches the parabola right there, okay? Grab your ruler out. This is a bit tricky. I want to try and do this, but I hope I don't accidentally rub off my board at the same time. So grab your ruler there. Actually, this will probably do. You know, that'll give me a long enough line. And with your ruler, nestle it up against the curve, against the parabola, so that you're happy with it being tangential at the point that we're interested in, at or when x equals 1. So I think I'm pretty happy with that. There we go. And I didn't rub off too much of the curve at the same time, which is always a bonus. So this guy here is the tangent. <clears throat> okay, now we have an idea of that. We know also how to find that. But straight away, the question is also asking us for this second object, a normal. A normal is just like a tangent in that it's also a straight line. But it's not, it doesn't have the same gradient as the curve. In fact, it has a perpendicular gradient to the curve. So it's at right angles with the tangent. You might like to label that. I'm going to put it in green because I'm going to draw my normal in green. The normal is perpendicular to the tangent. So what would that look like on ours? Well, you're going to come and slice across at right angles. So I'm guessing, well, I'm going to grab my ruler out again because I don't trust myself. I'm guessing it's going to look something like that. So a normal can cut the graph more than once. A normal can cut the graph more than once. As you can see, if I continued, extended that green line, uh, which I'm going to label normal now, the normal can cut the graph more than once. And in fact, as I'll show you later on, tangents can too. Tangents actually can intersect with a graph more than once. But at a particular spot, they will share the gradient. Let me just quickly show you what I mean before we move on to the nuts and bolts of this question. And this is worth drawing. Off on the side, just draw like a little set of axes, something like that. And what I'd like you to do is draw for me a cubic curve instead of a parabola, which is a quadratic. So it might look something like this. Now, this is a pretty common curve to have a look at. And I want you to recognize the fact that actually, it's quite easy for a tangent to intersect that curve more than once. For example, there's a tangent, right? Where is that black line? Where is it tangent? to the curve. 
it's tangent to the curve at, at this spot over here, whatever that happens to be, right? And you can see they share the same gradient at that point. But it just keeps on going on its merry way and slices the curve again. That's no problem. It's just that this line is not tangent here. It is tangent here. Make sense? Cool. Um, same de deal with the normal, by the way. When this continues going, it's not going to be at right angles to this part of the curve. It's only at right angles down here, at the particular spot that we specify. Okay. All right. So now that we know what a tangent and a normal are, we can go ahead and find them, because they're just straight lines like all the other ones that we've been dealing with. Think about the tangent. I've got a point here, by the way, now that I know that they're roots as well, what are the coordinates of that point? 1, comma 0. So I'll just go 1, comma 0. If you've got a point that's on the line, you only need one other piece of information to work out its equation. In this case, gradient. Because again, the gradient is what we know, it's what makes this tangent special. If we want to know the gradient at that point, what are we going to have to do? We're going to need to find the gradient function. We're going to have to differentiate. So let's go ahead and do that. If y is equal to that, which form? I've shown you a couple of forms for writing the derivative. I should use dy and dx, right? I suppose you, um, you could write y dash if you like, but I've already given the reasons why I'm, I'm not keen on that notation. If you said y equals f of x, then you could have gone f dash x. And I think that's... When you see um, f of x, you see the function notation, it's a, lot, uh, it's a lot easier to recognize. Oh, that's a dash. I know what that is. Um, but seeing as we've already got a y, I'm just going to run with this. OK, have a look. You've got one, two, three terms, each of which you can find the derivative of independently, which is nice. x squared, do you remember our rule for differentiating powers? What are we going to do? Yeah, the 2 is going to come out the front, right? That power will come out the front. And then what happens to the power? It, it drops down by 1, which makes it 1. So I, I'm not going to write it. Okay. What about this? This is also a power of x. It's, um, it's a 1. So what will happen? Yeah, so that 1 is going to come out the front, which produces no change. But then the power is going to drop down by 1. It's going to go from 1 to 0, which means you just end up with the minus 3. Yeah? Last thing, have a look at this guy, right? 2. What do we do with the derivative of that? So I want you to think, I want you to think about what y equals just 2, y equals 2. What does that line look like? Well, y equals 2 is something like this, right? y equals 2. It's a horizontal line. What is the gradient of a horizontal line? There's no rise. There's lots of run, but there's no rise, so it's 0 over whatever, right? So therefore, the 2 doesn't contribute anything to the derivative, it just ends up being 0. So I'm done. That's the derivative, okay? So now I can say when x equals 1. Now, what I'm about to do, just for the sake of completeness, because this is an important example, I'm going to find the y-coordinate. Now, in this case, the y-coordinate happened to be easy to see because it was a root. But if I'd given you any other x value, except for 2, okay? You're going to have to find out where those coordinates are and say when x equals 1, y equals, and then you're going to have to substitute into here, right? We already know this, so I'm just going to say y equals 0. When x equals 1, also, dy on dx, I can evaluate it at that point, right? So I'm just going to substitute x equals 1 into the derivative. So what do you get? 2 minus 3, which is negative 1. You happy with that? So therefore, I'm going to say the gradient of the tangent. I'm not going to say m by itself, because I'm about to, in about three minutes, find out another gradient. So I'm going to label the gradient that I'm dealing with. The gradient of the tangent is that. So therefore, the equation of the tangent is. And then I'm going to launch into which form? Point gradient. Point gradient, because I've got a point, got a gradient. So y minus 0 equals. Okay, what do you think? Are you happy? Not bad, considering I did a lot of that by hand. y equals minus x plus 1 looks pretty convincing to me. Okay. Uh, please note, by the way, I think it's really important for you to say this. 
not just because we're about to find a new equation in a second, and I don't want to just have two random equations sitting there, but I want you to communicate, why are you doing this next thing? Like, why is that there? Please don't go straight from there to there, because the logic is not clear, and you're not communicating that in an obvious way. Now I'm ready to move on and find this thing. It's perpendicular, so what do I know about the gradient? It will be the negative reciprocal of this gradient. Right? So I'm then going to say the gradient of the normal is going to be the negative reciprocal of this, right? Minus 1 over that, which is also minus 1. Okay? Which is 1, which confirms this decent diagram that we also drew before. Okay? I've got a new gradient, but I don't need to find another point. Why not? It, it goes through the same point as the tangent. That's kind of the point of this, right? So therefore, I'm going to say the equation of the normal And then I'm just going to launch into point gradient again. Okay. Happy times? So it's not too complicated, but you've got to know where you're going. You've got to know, what do I need to find the equation of this line? Two pieces. I'll need, in addition to this x-coordinate, a y-coordinate. And then you're going to need to know a grade here, because that's the important thing about a tangent and a normal. Any questions? Russell. Yeah, sure. Uh, it's easy enough to change this question very subtly. Let's say, find the equations of the tangent and the normal to the same curve at when x equals 3. It's not that complicated to do. So I'm going to find the derivative again, because I still need to know the gradient eventually. But instead of going through this, I'm going to say when x equals, what did I just say? 3, right? y equals, and now I have to go ahead and work this out, because I have no idea what coordinate that will be. Uh, let's see. Um, 4 minus, what did I just say? Uh, that'll be 9 plus 2. Have I done it right? Nine. Did I try? Yes? It's nine, oh, sorry, I'm squaring. Yeah, that's right. Equals 2, because I'm squaring 3. Okay, so you've got a, now you've got a different x and y coordinate, and you're going to have to find a new gradient at that point. Okay? Um, I like to distinguish between the gradient function and the gradient at a particular spot or of a particular feature. Okay? So use dy on dx for the function itself, which can change depending on what x you'd like. And then these guys, on the other hand, they're just numbers because it's a gradient at a certain spot. Does that make sense? 